Welcome back guys to the Final Fantasy 13 2 post game show. Today we're going to be doing some paradox endings and facing some old foes that of course we, we kind of took the easy way out and left them and did the story to defeat them as it were. But this time around we're just going to go head on, face to face, man on man, or like you know three men or you know one man and two women or whatever. You know it depends, depends who's my party, whatever, rambling, and fight them. At their full power state. So, first of all, we're going to do the very first boss in the game. Atlas. In his full power state. And hope to not get completely smushed into the ground. Let's go check it out. Oh, oh, well, I would check it out if things didn't just miraculously appear and start beating on me. You don't have a full power state, so you're going to just go down and die. Die, 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 die. Oh, one left. Never mind. That one's gone as well. So as I said again, <laughs> let us go and fight Atlas. With his full HP pool. All the damage that he does. And this time around I've got to pay attention to switching the Sentinel. And not looking too happy. He never looks too happy. He's Atlas. Is this different music? I need to pay attention and switch to sentinels and stuff. Let's buff myself up first, eh? I see you winding up there. You beat up Saz as much as you like, we don't care. Beat him up, it's fine. Oh, you came back with a second! That's just cheating. That's, that's just cheating me. You going for another strike? No, you're not. He actually smooshed us into the ground. Let's go. Time to get out there and do some damage to him. Our guys are fairly powerful now after defeating Oku and Immortal and all that. What are you doing now, sir? I don't know what I should hide from and what I should stay up and fighting with. Well, my buffs are running out. Try to keep his stagger bar up. Kind of didn't. Oh, he just he buffed me completely. Keep his stagger bar up there, Sarah. Sentinels! Ow. Oh yeah, I can't heal. I'm stuck on the ground. Sentinels just in time. You going for round two? No, you're not. You always make me worried, sir. I don't think we'll get the stagger on, but we're just going to increase the straight damage on him until he can no longer resist being smashed down by us. Get some more bravery on us. The more damage, the better. Debuffing me again? Time to get lightning on your case, I think, sir. I'm a bit worried about the fact he's winding up for an attack and I'm doing this. Are you winding up? No, you're you're dying up. So how do we do? We did it. Here we go then with the. Uh... Oh, it's the same routine, in fact. I'm on it. There seems to be a little less time to do the live triggers this time round. How did we get here? No, look out! Jump, no jump! Move! I think I found his weak spot. Ready? 
do it! Wait for it! Now! And that's Atlas completely humbled at full power. So time to see the secret ending. Takes us on a trip through time, I see. The Arkill Step. Guess, guess, guess AF. Special place. Without first resolving the paradox, Sarah and Noel defeat the rampaging giant Atlas. In the ensuing confluence of energies, they are suddenly transported to an entirely different location. The two find themselves standing on a rolling plain that Sarah recognizes as the steps of Grand Pulse. A thudding boom resonates through the air. They have heard heavy footfalls like these before. All around them are gigantic soldiers, man-made weapons of destruction. The final war spoken of in the prophecies has begun. Okay, let's go. A colossal war once raged across the land. The spark was the pillar of cocoon, growing weaker by the day, threatening to collapse. Among the people, there were those who sought to resurrect the foul sea. They wanted to use their power to avert catastrophe. However, there were many who feared the foul sea and their part in Cocoon's history. The populace was split. Anger divided them. Over the course of time, the debate escalated into war. As the battle raged on, one side created soldiers the size of mountains. Instead of surrendering, their rivals retaliated by building their own massive weapons. What began as a dispute between humans became an earth-shattering war between giants. The titanic conflict grew beyond the people's ability to control. Pulse became a scorched battlefield. And eventually what they set out to protect was destroyed. That story has been passed down for generations. It happened long before I was born, but for Sarah, it's a war she knows nothing about, one that has yet to take place. The massive weapons of war overran the land. They say it was the beginning of the end of the world, the day the giants caused the fall of Cocoon. If it's true. If we defeat all the giants, then we should be able to save the future. And the world! I've made up my mind. I'm staying here with you, Noel. In this time. I can't let the world be destroyed. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> the pillar supporting Cocoon is already weak and starting to crumble. There's not much time left for us. But even so, we're not going to give up. We can't. Because I know what happens after Cocoon comes crashing down from the sky. The world is stripped of growth, of life. The water runs dry, and even the winds grow still. Everything withers away in a slow death. It's a world with no hope, no future, nothing. A forsaken world. That's the world in which I was born. Fragment discovered. Transcript. A giant mistake. That seems to be a bad ending, so to say. Paradox endings. A paradox ending is a side ending that results from choices Sarah and Noel make elsewhere along the timeline. There are several paradox endings hidden within the Historia Crux. Can you find them all? And we're going to go find another one now. See, so yeah, that's one way the game could have gone. One timeline, one kind of possibility in existence. Very fitting for Yule to narrate it, seeming she sees all existences and all timelines. 
And that's more or less actually what happened as well, considering the fact that the timeline Noel comes from, this was a thing that happened. So it didn't look like a good ending for Sarah and Noel at all, considering they were nowhere to be seen and Noel's weapons were abandoned. Data log updated. So we are going to go look for a... No, oh, I can't move. Okay. Reopen the gate, because I rewinded time to get there. Cool little animation, that. And go look for another Paradox ending. I'll see you there in Sunlift Waterscape. And here we stand before the gigantic royal ripeness or mutant tomato as his weaker form is known. But he's at his full power state now and is the next place for us to earn a Paradox ending. So it's time to get in there, fight him and find out. What'll happen if we defeat Flan at full power? Follow him straight to the artifact. So maybe. It could happen. They may be drawn by the space-time disturbance. Let's find out. We don't want to go there, we want to fight the flan. Here, flan. Here, flan. No, we can't win this. Not now. No looks like he's up for us. You say we give it a shot and see what happens, huh? Typical snow brashness. Let's fight his royal ripeness, massive state. He is a lot bigger. Let's get to it. Yes, he is bigger. Get the buffs on. Belching on us. Is this something I should sentinel or... Oh, he removed all the buffs I spent all that time putting on. I've got D-Shell on him, which is nice. That deals a fair bit of damage, but it's fine. We can tank it using our healing rather than Sentinel. Does he still have the same weaknesses? No, it's a different monster on the bestiary, in fact. Let's get out there and fight it. We've got D-Shell, so that's going to help a lot. Good switch there. I did see that coming a long way off after all. I wonder if we can debuff him some more. Well, he's going to debuff us some more, that's for sure. Did it remove all buffs? Oh my god, absolutely all of them? That's just not fair. We got deprotected as well, so let's just... Oh my god! Didn't check my HP pool. Get healing, guys. So I can get some buffs on while I heal up. I can't keep up with the healing because of the poison on us as well. At least Snow's out there to keep the stagger gauge up no matter what. And his poison is nasty. Okay, that sounds like something I need to conserve. Oh, he's getting more powerful. Okay, he's hitting this hard. I don't really want to provoke the guy, to be honest. I want to heal. Come on, Snow, keep attacking. You do little damage, but you keep that bar up high for when we can actually attack again. Oh, look, we can attack. The final moment we can finally attack again. Of course, we have to go straight back in the center. He's got haste, but we've managed to put deep protect on him again. Get the damage out there, guys. Oh, I missed that. Oh, he hit as hard then when I missed it. I was too busy paying attention to the... Uh, I'm missing everything. I was too busy paying attention to my HP as he hit me. He was harder than Atlas. Let's put it that way. Martyr's Badge, Vitality Crystals. Now time to see the Paradox ending.
I guess we always get taken somewhere. Sun left water escape. Guess, guess, guess AF. It was a world that belonged to the Flan. A Flan controlled, Flan friendly, and Flan approved kingdom. Sarah and Noel once defeated a massive Flan, but the act triggered a paradoxical backlash and filled the breadth of Cocoon with gelatinous organisms. From among them rose the most powerful Flan to ever exist. The entire world quailed beneath its tyrannical pseudopod. Would all of Cocoon be devoured by this immense Flan potentate? I've made a world that is made of Flans and full of Flans. What? Once upon a time in a faraway land, there was a giant forest, Kubau. There was plenty of water in the vibrant woods, and all the monsters lived happily together, Kubau. The monsters loved to test their strength, and sometimes their games got a little rough. But even so, they all got along fairly well, Kubau. One bright and sunny day, a mean flan came along and declared himself to be the king of the forest, Kubau. The flan stood as high as the clouds in the sky, so none of the monsters disobeyed him, Kubau. The king ordered his royal subjects to shower him with gifts from all corners of the world, Kubau. In return, he promised to banish humans from their domain, and he would create a kingdom where monsters ruled the land, Kubau. <laughs> I told you we'd just be able to sneak in. Hey, Sarah, how do I look? Just like a monster? The transformation spell worked like a charm. No one can tell who we are. Mog, now we'll need the wonder honey. Can you go find some? Kubo, off you go. Hurry. The king was even bigger than the giant plan we defeated in the past, Kubo. So we all came up with a marvelous plan, Kubo. We would transform into monsters and sneak in unsuspectedly. Then we would present the king with a delicious flan, Kubo, and he would say, Incredible! And then he would keel over and die on the spot. We're going to serve up a dish of poison flan to his royal highness. Fight flan with flan, as they say. It's a flawless plan, Kubo. Hey, what's taking so long? Where's that wonder honey? We also need some hoax herb and exquisite sugar, you know. And don't forget the rotten cheese. <laughs> Why do I have to do all the work, Kubo? Hello? You're going to be the first to get a taste of my poison plan, Kubo! <laughs> What a weird ending. Why did Noel sound like some kind of goofy Charles Taylor as well? That was really, really odd. It was really odd, but fun all the same. So that's two of the Paradox endings in the game, guys. Just giving you a little bit of a taster as we move on. And discover more of the Final Fantasy XIII 2 post-game. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time for more. See you around.